Jamie and Adam are testing if the extra thrust you'd get from swimming through syrup might just counteract the added resistance. So now they'll mix up one last batch with a texture that's more like good old maple syrup. Not too thick, not too thin, but just right. That's the Goldilocks myth. We're mixing up a batch right now and soon we'll be putting it to the test. It's a blend that should meet any definition of syrup. 500 times thicker than water. So these are Adam's last three swims, and given how fast he swam in the light syrup, his times in this stuff should be really interesting. What's my time? 14.34. Yeah! <laughs> that goopy looking scum on top we call fish eyes. It's just clusters of coir gum. Adam actually seems to enjoy swimming in it. 13.81. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. You're done. You can get out now. I'm officially done. Adam's times were nice and steady, but it stands to reason that a better swimmer would be even more consistent, and that makes for better science. Enter this fine specimen. Nathan Adrian was a gold medal winner at the Beijing Olympics. Hello, sir. Hey, how's it going? Oh, my God. Look at you. <laughs> hey, Nathan. Hey, how you doing? That's, that's, that's perfect. You feel like running some tests for us? Absolutely, I'd love to. Let's start him off in a bent pool filled with straight water to set up baseline time. This surprise of Jamie's is proving extremely fruitful. Not only is Nathan fast, which I expected, he's super consistent. All of his times are within half a second of each other. My times had about a one second spread, so it just means that the data is that much more precise. 9.81. Can we let him get out? Let's let him get out. Now it's time for this sports hero to swim in something gooey and slippery. On your mark, get set. Nathan, just pretend that you're one with the syrup. Almost dead on the money. 10.87. Is that funky or what? So weird. so weird. You can bet this wasn't part of Nathan's post-Olympic dream. Just think about it like you gotta swim faster to get out of it quicker. <laughs> a man with the right stuff forced to wallow in some very wrong stuff. Awesome. I can tell you're starting to get into it a little bit. It grows on you after a while, doesn't it? <laughs> As far as resistance goes, when you're swimming at speed, it doesn't, doesn't feel all that much different than water, truthfully. So Jamie tries to make sense of the stats. Nathan was a full 9% slower in medium syrup than water. More surprisingly, while his water times were super consistent, his syrup swims were much less consistent than Adam's. And with Adam swimming just 5.4% slower in syrup than water, which is almost within his margin of error, this myth could still go either way. Do you think that you were slower because the goo was offering more resistance or because it was messing with your technique? I'd have to say it was definitely messing with um, my technique and how comfortable I was in the water. It's such a huge disadvantage to be in such a foreign environment with the, uh, with the goop and everything. None of which seems to bother our boys, but given Nathan's erratic times, Adam's prepared to drop a bombshell. We're going to throw out Nathan's swim times in the syrup. See, we brought him in, being an Olympic swimmer, one of the best in the world, we thought it was going to eliminate swimming time as a variable. But because what he does for hours every day is swim in a clear water pool, following a line, going as fast as he can, the syrup threw his technique out the window. Mine proved the point much better than his do. That's pretty cool. So how are we going to wrap this one up? The simple fact is that you swam just about as fast in the medium or Goldilocks syrup and the light syrup as you did in water. Well, so I'd say that makes it solidly plausible. You can swim as fast in syrup as you can in water. Plausible, depending on the viscosity of the syrup. <laughs>